Well, hello and welcome to another edition of Be Still My Soul. And today we're looking at Psalm 82. Now, a friend of mine lives in a country where the legal system is uh, very corrupt. Uh, there's little justice for the poor and the needy and uh, those who are rich, uh, those who are powerful, at times literally get away with murder. And the result is that within the country generally, the powerful oppress the weak. And they do that because there's no comeback on them, because there's no justice. Justice is a very precious thing. And yet justice is rarely administered right and true. Even in our country, which has a fairly good justice system, justice is not always done. And so when we see uh, justice not being done, how should we respond? Well, through prayer. Prayer is the way to respond to injustice because only God can ultimately deal with it and sort it out. And the good news is, one day he will. This Psalm 82 is about justice and about God's judgment over those who are supposed to administer justice in this world. And so we see three things. We see the courtroom, the case and the cry. First of all, the courtroom. Verse 1, God has taken his place in the divine council. In the midst of the gods, he holds judgment. God is pictured here in this psalm as the judge opening up a court of law, taking his stand in the court of law. Um, it's judgment day and he gathers in the courtroom the judges. He assembles them together. Not that he might be cons that, that he might consult them on how to judge, but to judge them himself. And these judges or these gods, as they're called, are human leaders. Uh, they are judges. And perhaps behind them we're meant to see the evil spiritual forces that lead them to judge in unjustly. And God says, I'm going to judge the judges. Now, when it comes to judgment generally, we don't really like the idea of judgment today. But when you've been wronged, really wronged, the thing that you cry for is justice. And a lack of justice is one of the things that causes a country to become unstable. A corrupt legal system brings instability because it serves those who are powerful and it fails those who are weak. But God is a judge. And therefore, because God is not just a judge, but the ultimate judge, earthly rulers will not get away with injustice. There is a judgment day coming, and they will be judged. But the second thing we see here is the case being worked out. Uh, the, the courtroom has been set, the judge is uh, on the bench, and now the case is brought forward, charges are levelled, witnesses speak and a sentence is delivered first of all the charge verse 2 how long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked these judges are unjust and they are evil they don't judge according to the law but instead they show favoritism to the powerful at the expense of the powerless favoritism to the rich at the expense of the poor maybe they're taking bribes from the rich maybe they uh, fear uh, retribution and consequences if they actually judge rightly. But then we see the case. Verse 3, give justice to the weak and the fatherless, maintain the right of the afflicted and the destitute, rescue the weak and the needy, deliver them from the hands of the wicked. The judges themselves are, are judges in Israel. They know God's law. They know what they should be doing. And there's four things that God expects of these judges. Give justice. 
maintain the right of the afflicted, rescue and deliver. And they're to do this, who are they to do this to? To the weak, the orphan, uh, those who are suffering, those who are uh, poor and homeless, those who are weak, those who are needy. That's what they're supposed to do. And yet they failed on all four counts. But we have a God here and a judge who is concerned for the weak and the needy, who is concerned for the poor and the orphan, who wants to deliver people from those who are wicked. The judges have failed to do that, but God will make sure that justice is done. But the third thing we see is the witnesses who speak up. Verse 5, they have, talking about the judges, they have neither knowledge nor understanding. That is, they are morally ignorant. Not that they're ignorant of God's law, but that they dismiss it and don't want to do it. They walk about in darkness. That is, the distressed and the needy are left without remedy. There's darkness. They're not helped. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. The consequence of their actions is that there's instability. And society becomes insecure because the moral foundations of reality have not been upheld. That's what people are saying. And so the sentence is delivered. Verses 6 and 7. This is God speaking. I said, you are God's sons of the Most High, all of you. Nevertheless, like men, you shall die and fall like any prince. The position of power, which they've abused, is reviewed. You are gods. You, sons of the most like you've been put into a position of authority. You've been, in some sense, in God's place, in God's stead. To perform justice on the earth. Because you haven't, though, you're going to die. Like Adam died. Adam failed to uh, be God's man, to be God's judge and ruler on the earth. And he fell, and the result is that he died. And these rulers will fall, and they will die. But sadly, their death will be a death that doesn't end. The case against these judges is awful. It's clear, and the sentence will be executed. And so what's the response of God's people to all this? Well, the final thing we see here is the cry. Verse 8, Arise, O God, judge the earth. Why? For you shall inherit all the nations. This is the, this is the prayer that is meant to come from the lips of believers when we see injustice. We're to call out to the God of justice to judge the earth. And why should he judge the earth? Because the earth belongs to him. In fact, the earth belongs to Jesus Christ. When he talks about inheriting the nations, I think we're supposed to think of Psalm 2, where God has set his king on his holy, uh, on, 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 a, on, on, the, on his holy hill. His king is the ruler of the universe and his king is Jesus Christ. And when he died on the cross, he, he died to pay the price for our sins and for the brokenness of this world. And he receives as his inheritance us and the world in which we live. And one day he's going to come back and claim his own and claim this world as his own and execute justice and remove wickedness once and for all. And as Christians, we're therefore to cry out, how long, O Lord, until you do that? We're to pray, come, Lord Jesus. And that, at this Advent season, is meant to be our theme. The theme of Advent is, Lord, would you come back and would you right every wrong? Would you bring about justice on the earth? And one day we know you will. Thanks so much for tuning in. Until next week, God bless.